Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a tutorial talking about making this procedural circuit using animation nodes. I'm going to use the preset library I created for my own. You can download it for free to follow this tutorial. Here I want you to make sure that you're using the newest version of animation nodes that has just been updated these several days and the newest version of my preset library which is at least 2.3.2. This is a simplest way to solve any possible issues due to the recent change in animation nodes. If you still encounter other issues, please contact me on Facebook and the link is provided in the description. So here we are in Blender and I want to like to firstly discuss the most of the important principle within this CPU generation. So the most important node is this find the shortest path node. And what it does is I start with a plane which has a kind of grid subdivision and I start, I select one point, one vertices from this mesh, which has been shown with this uh, red marker. And I start from these points to reach all other points on this mesh using the path that has been formed on this mesh. And uh, from point to point, of course, they should go with the shortest path. And finally, this is the spline that I'm generating. So this is the most important principle, but you can also definitely change the starting points but it's not very interesting because our plane is not interesting. It's just kind of a grid. So what we need to do is to generate a more kind of interesting mesh uh, to direct, for example, I'm going to delete certain edges so that to make the path more interesting. Like once we delete the one point, some path looks kind of more interesting. And this is basically the starting principle of this entire CPU generation. So here we're in a new file of Blender because the Blender does not create a procedural primitive plane to, for us to play with. So I'm going to generate everything here with an animation nodes. To generate the kind of a grid, I'm going to use a preset that I've created which is called a trapezoid grid. I don't like this name, but once you see what it does, you probably realize how it actually works. So now we instantaneously get a trapezoid kind of shapes. Uh, the Y division is just uh, determining how many lines you have on Y direction and X start is how it starts on X X stop is how it stop at X and there is an interpolation method that you can determine the shape about how it starts to reach from its uh, reach to its stop so you can definitely play with all this kind of parameter finally generates kind of a shape or whatever stuff Next thing is now we have all these kind of points, but we still don't have all these kind of edges to connect the points to points. The thing that we need to actually do uh, is there is a method which is called find close points. I've discussed this node in my Plexus tutorial, and I've specifically made a preset out of these methods, which is called a tree form vectors. So I just need to input, uh, input all these kind of vectors and it will automatically generate a mesh for us. Uh, we can definitely compose this mesh or output this mesh, but more importantly, I think it's to connect it with the final shots of the past because the principle, as what we have discussed earlier, is to generate a kind of shortest path from one, connect one point to all the rest of points. I'm going to convert everything to spline and I'm going to use the curve object output. Put a spline to splines, and then now we're generating a kind of interesting mesh. If I turn off this 3D viewer, you can see what we are actually generating. And this is already a kind of tree. But at this moment, it's still not very interesting because um, it's too uniform. And you can obviously see this kind of pattern from point to point because our initial grid generated is kind of uniform. Speaking about variances, there are essentially two kind of methods. I'm just uh, one method is just to mask out of some of the vectors. So I specifically made a preset which is called uh, mask vectors, and you just uh, make it a replace. The all, now all these kind of points has been disappeared. The reason is that the threshold is 0 0.5 and the fourth is one. So if the fourth is over the threshold, then everything will disappear. Fourth low, below the threshold, everything will appear. You can also use the inverted boolean to do the opposite, but it basically this is how it works. Another thing I would like to mention is, so which means we're using fourth to actually control whether it appears and disappears. Uh, so we can use the noise fourth, 
and you can put the fourth into fourth and immediately you can see there is a, a chunk of points that has been disappeared and you can definitely offset this point so that you can see the, the chunk has actually been moved to the other places and the, the, this is why I need this noise wolf instead of random wolf because there is a more kind of connection from the disappearance to disappearance you can definitely manipulate more with this kind of frequency or other stuff but I suggest you not to manipulate this amplitude and another thing I want you to realize is now uh, because I changed the frequency or whatever you can realize the point the chunk that uh, you just saw is not very obvious here is one reason is because when the amplitude is 1 it means the fourth value goes from the negative 1 to a positive 1 but our threshold is 0 0.5 so which means there is actually f 3 fourths of the points that will show up instead of disappearance here to make everything more kind of clear I'm going to use the remap for, for noise this is not a very special preset it just basically remap everything from negative 1 to 1 to 0 to 1 so that it really matches the threshold that we designed or we designated Okay, and once we finish this this actually looks kind of very interesting I would say but it's not too like tree like this is actually the reason is the when we form the tree from vectors the connection from point to point is not very how should I say not very not very dense anyway you just uh, increase this amount so that the connection from point to point it becomes more and more and you can see it th now this looks like more kind of a tree like and you can definitely play around with all these kind of settings so now it, this origin look or already looks like kind of uh, phylogenic trees for evolution the second way of making variation is to offset a little bit the vertices so now what we can actually see from the points that we are generating is that they are kind of very straight from one to the other it's because this is exactly what we are generating using this grid so I want to have a kind of offset so I've created a preset which is called the cellular vector noise so you just replace the noise and uh, I don't need the Z movement and instantaneously you can see all these kind of points are being offset it. and you can definitely manipulate all these kind of XYZ to manipulate much here I'm going to turn on this frequency and uh, it looks kind of completely bizarre and then um, to make it more kind of subtle I'm going to decrease the magnitude on X and Y so that it does not look like a lot of change but uh, what's important is if you change the seed then the connection from point to point becomes very different and you can also change the seeds of the masking and you can also even change the type of all this kind of masking so these are all the ways to make the kind of variation to make our um, structure more kind of interesting that you can play around with whether it's kind of CPU or whatever other stuff and the rest is more likely about uh, changing all these parameters so that's now I'm going to start to actually increase crank up this X start and you can definitely play around with all this kind of interpolation next thing that I would like to discuss uh, is if you real uh, if you look at the CPU it does not only start from one point as we've shown here it actually starts from m multiple points and then it has been spread it out or whatever whatever stuff so we need to have multiple starting points and as you remember earlier it's the actual starting point is determined by the this source and this source input does re uh, can receive multiple inputs so the easiest way to work as what we actually wish is to just take this random number and I'm going to hit this button to create a list and put the number into numbers and it, now we don't really see any specific change because I need to crank up this maximum to a value and if you just crank up that to 8 then you can see immediately there are some changes very kind of interesting changes and you can change all this kind of count so that make it kind of more interesting here I want to kindly remind you if you're generating a CPU uh, one thing you really need to be cautious with is at the most beginning when we generate a grid uh, we have an X start which determines the um, the first row in our places so now it has been set to the 8 
and you probably don't want when you are actually generating this random number you probably don't want to make this maximum over this the x starts because if you make that for example 25 then the starting points will actually go to the second row and finally you generate such kind of weird shapes if you are generating cpu then this is definitely not the way you should go because i don't understand what this is <laughs> but definitely you can it depends on what you're trying to play with you can definitely generate various uh, weird patterns because even like this is something very interesting but it's just not good for cpu so you can definitely link all these numbers together with another integral input but this is something that you can do at your free time so up to this moment i've covered the most basic principle to generate a single unit of cpu circuitry it's still not completed because the cpu will at least have four sides that goes to the north west the south east and basically four direction so we are not going to duplicate this entire node tree for four times to accomplish these four sides instead we are going to use a loop function so in these loop functions there are several things uh, several important things that you need to do in this parameter i'm going to firstly link the seed into the one parameter so that we can i can use one control of seed to control many other seeds so I link the seed to the other places and link the seed to the random number generator uh, is there more seeds i think this is it uh, another important thing that you must do is put this x start into the parameter as i have explained earlier this x start should be the same as the maximum number for this random number generator there's also many other parameters that you can put into place but uh, i will you can definitely do that in your free times i'm not going to do that here the important thing however is in this iterator not the parameter anymore but the iterator i'm going to hit this plus icon and type in the matrix list because i'm going to define uh, the locate how our single unit of circuitry should locate so i'm going to use a node transform spline put the matrix into the transformation and because we're finally output the splines outside this loop i'm just taking this spline list and output these splines so we need this spline input so we'll just go back to this entire node and finally we find our splines and put that into place so now we disconnect this curve object output and we select this loop and create the invoke, invoke node and i'm going to put this spline list back to spline however we are not generating any splines in our target this is because we didn't put any things to define the location of where our spline will be generated so we just need to distribute the circle we need uh, four points on these circles and now we actually generate four points so now we have four units in total this definitely looks kind of bizarre at this moment so we're going to rotate all these kind of points to a proper place so we're going to use the offset matrices i'm going to select the node hit u goes to the advanced settings i'm going to choose the translation to local axis and the rotation to local axis local pivot so turn on this location so let's firstly determine a better rotation so let's rotate the negative 90 degrees so everything is, is heading towards outside and then move this y-axis so now we actually completed the entire circuitry you just need a cube to cover the center part that we do not have all these kind of things then we have finished this circuitry the rest of what you really need to do is just to change all these kind of parameter i have to kindly remind you is because because i actually forgot to add the offset function within this node if we increase the x or y division the bottom part of the single unit of circuitry will actually go beyond the limits so in this case you just have to 
increase this y value so that it looks kind of more whatever and you can increase this but I think at some point I'm going to uh, improve all these kind of functions of the preset so that it makes easier for you and me to work with with all this kind of setup another important thing is that previously you, you see the execution time of the node tree actually exceed about 200 milliseconds it's kind of very unfavorable the reason is because it looks like we only have this many splines but the reality is within splines there is actually overlap the splines within it there is currently not many methods to really solve this problem but there is a preset I've made, it's just called a spline executor. Or you can also mask a spline. This mask spline is the same workflow as uh, the mask factor that we mentioned earlier. So that you can you can play with around with all these kind of settings. And specifically for this mask lens, you just increase one. So Previously, if we don't have this cube, you can see at the bottom there are several kind of small tiny bit of splines Which may be something you want or maybe something that you want to want So you just increase these thresholds like one Then you actually decrease some some kind of part that you may not like So that it clean up some splines Another thing is to just use the original fourth so that it determine oh, whether this spline is something you want or not you can definitely play with run with all these kind of things finally speaking about the shaders uh, you can just simply generate a emission shaders I'm going to take the shader into emission and if you would like to have a kind of um, energy wave like looking let's just take the strength down then what you need to do is just to take a wave texture connect it to the color so now you start to get kind of wave these patterns and I'm going to use the UV because we're using the spline so the UV is generated along the splines very nicely you can increase the you can actually decrease the scale of wave texture and then you can play with this X value so now you get a kind of all these kind of very whatever stuff is that possible to randomize all this kind of wave because now it looks like everything is so uniform I think you can definitely do that by manipulating all this kind of shader but then it becomes another tutorials so at this moment I think I will just stop here so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time bye bye